Ready, set, go. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Yep. Welcome to the Sweet Spot, an Updog podcast. I'm Andrea Morissette. And I'm Jack Bailey. Uh, we are your co-hosts for the day. And our awesome guest today is Ben Holt. Give it up for Ben. Yeah. We're going to be talking Hello. today about Fireball. We are super, super excited about that. So what do you think? You want to tell us about Fireball? Yeah, oh, wait, wait. yeah, totally. I want to know. About oh, no, wait, we need to learn about Ben. I want to know who Ben is. Who is this I know, guy? I to work. I'm like, tell me about Fireball. Oh, uh, so actually, first, we want to know a little bit, a little bit more about you, Ben. So tell us about you, about your dogs, about your family, where you live, that kind of stuff. Just give everybody an idea of who you are. Sure. Sounds good. Um, so I live in Massachusetts with my family of four, my wife and two daughters. Um, they all play up dog and um, lots of dog sports. We initially were mostly into fly ball um, as our, as our dog sport of choice started that in like 20 something years ago when we lived in Seattle. Um, and then through meeting people, once we moved to, to Massachusetts, um, started playing up dog, just like a tiny bit, um, hosted it on a Friday before the weekend fly ball tournament to try to like get some fly ball people exposed. Um, and then it kind of just took off from there. Mostly, honestly, during the pandemic, we like went crazy with up dog video games and, uh, the whole family got really into it then. Um, we have seven dogs right now, but probably more than that in the not so distant future. Um, they're mostly border collies or mixes of border collies. And then we have an English Cocker Spaniel who's like the outlier um, from the rest. <laughs> um, his name is Birch. I play freestyle with him. And then my other dog that I mostly play with is Dr. Worm. He's a border collie whippet mix. Um, we have his mom and siblings and um, other breedings. They're all kind of from our original dog, Nick's, that we've bred. And uh, yeah, so everybody's got a dog or two to play with, um, hence having so many dogs, but everybody I wants to play. Player. So I need at least one or two for everyone. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I think at this point, up dog is, or uh, frisbee in general is getting to be, um, you know, my, my favorite sport, although we still definitely play fly ball and have fun doing that and dabble in a couple of other dog sports. Very nice. And uh, what's the club out there? Uh, so our club is, it's called face to face and, um, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few of us, um, there's my family and then our friends, Ashley and Cass and, um, you know, who, who, uh, you guys met or saw at, at Updog X. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of the six of us that are running it and the kids get put to work at, uh, events they're, they're helping out. That's super cool. Yep. You're muted. Dang it. That was because of the dogs. <laughs> Thank you, Dre. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, uh, Ben's not not saying this, so I'll say it. But uh, Ben has just I say quickly, but like within the, the last year, just become one of the elite players in our uh, updog games. You will see his name at the top of the list for bike club okay. and things like that. Um, he's just got he really breaks down the games, figures out the strategies and it's just it's been impressive uh, seeing some of the scores that he's come up with. And um, he is currently our top mm -hmm. score for the new game of Fireball. Not that we're really keeping track <laughs> of, of points at the moment, but um, at Updog X, we had oh, um, yeah. yeah, we had a beta test of it there and, and he ended up with the high score there. And as far as I know, there's not been a higher score in any of the other beta tests around the country that we've had, too. But anyway, I just wanted you guys, if you don't know about Ben and his dogs and his skill level, he is an amazing player. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it was like absolutely. 87 or 88, something like that. Say that again, Dre. 
the fireball score. We couldn't remember what the fireball score was, Ben, but I, cause I mean, we were just oh. trying to look it up when we, when we saw it, it was, it was, an, it reminded me of a time warp score, which is why I like a good time warp score. So that's why I was thinking it was in the eighties, but I don't remember. Yeah. I think I don't remember exactly, but I think it was like 84 or something like that. Yeah. It was in the eighties. Yeah. I like got that high upper, upper time warp score ish. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. wow, that was like, he hit all the zones at just the right time. It was really, really cool. Yeah. I, there's a bit of luck to be perfectly honest, but um, yeah, it was, it was a good round. Well, well so we we're talking about the, yeah, the game details. What Jack? Well, before we go into, I, sorry, I know we want to <laughs> jump into ben. fireball. I'm going to keep stopping <laughs> us from doing that. Um, before we jump into fireball, Ben, one of the questions that we always ask just so that folks get to know um, other people in the updog community um, so you told us all about your dogs, your family, um, up dog, you know, your club. What do you do when you're not playing up dog? Yeah, sure. Um, well, that's actually why we moved to, to Massachusetts. Um, we lived in Seattle. Uh, that's where I met my wife and, um, we moved here for me to go to vet school at Tufts in, in, in Massachusetts outside of Boston. Um, and and so that, that's what I do now. I graduated like 10 years ago. Um, I was a little later to go back to vet school. I was like, I got a master's in bird population biology. I had all this, all this weird path to vet school. Um, but uh, yeah, so now I'm a vet. I work at an urgent care um, practice and like, it's like a surgery and internal medicine and, and urgent care practice. And um that's what I do most of the time, but I luckily get to work like three or four days a week because I work long shifts and then um, have time off. I mean, a lot of it's spent doing Frisbee stuff or <laughs> or, um, or stuff with the dogs, hiking. We, we have a lot of hiking and so they go and run. It's not all just um, play and disc. Um, but we do that. And then of course, my, my kids, they're 11 and 14. So between school and swimming and, uh, you know, other activities where we're always busy doing that. Um, and then occasionally like to sneak off and, and travel and do like leave the dogs behind. Um, so we're, you know, we've, you know, we do that occasionally, but most of the trips are dog centric. <laughs> we have a trailer and a big, huge van. So tow the RV and take the dogs along to different events. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I was on a like non dog vacation. Yeah, it gets a little complicated. Um, luckily, we've got a lot of friends, so we will switch. We'll watch their dogs. They'll watch our dogs, and so we can occasionally make it happen for a week to to get away and have like a actual vacation. Yeah, that's good. That's good to do. Yeah. Cat, let's let's figure that out. Yeah. Well, when I, when I, you know, when we move back to Florida, then you'll have us nearby ish and then we'll do dog swap. So you come in. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm writing that down. <laughs> Contractual obligation. Yep. Okay. All can right. we do it now? Now, do now it let's, now let's talk fireball. <laughs> talk about fireball. So we've been talking about um, like what happened at, at Up Dog X, but nobody knows what the game is. So um, nobody's seen the rules. A lot of people haven't played it. So like describe the game for us. If you had to describe fireball to somebody who had never played it before, what would you say? Sure. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's kind of a combination of a few games, really. If you want to kind of think of it in games, you already know, uh, it uses the, the small field. So, um, a grid of nine, nine squares, um, you know, same as, as four way or, or spaced out or whatever. Um, and you stand in one corner of the field, sort of think of it as like the, the semicircle for spaced out. Um, so you're in one far corner and then spreading out in front of you is that grid. Um, and, and it's essentially depending on the distance from you, the, the points are awarded for a catch in any of those zones. Um, it's sort of like on a diagonal. I should have drawn a picture, um, but of course- it's like the, a diamond shape, yeah? Yeah, kind of like a diamond shape, exactly. So you're standing in this bottom corner and then out from there, you, um, you, you get points for catches in each zone, anywhere from, of course, one all the way up to eight, because there's nine total squares. You can't throw to your 
throwing zone. So you, you know, you get eight, eight throwing zones. Um, you can't, oh, sorry, someone popped up. Um, you can't repeat a catch in the same zone until you clear all eight. Um, and so you'll work your way through those eight catch zones um, in a, in a similar way to maybe like boom, working your way down the field. And, um, the farther you throw, the more points you get. Then if you were to clear all eight catch zones, it would start over for you. Um, okay. Space outy, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, sort of like, like spaced out. Um, although I suppose you could throw to the same zone again, unlike spaced out. Um, the, the like crazy thing about fireball is that at some point during your round, um, a portion of the song fireball will play and that basically doubles your points. So if you threw to the five, you'd get 10. If you threw to the one, you'd get two. Um, so introduces a little bit of strategy because of course, doubling an eight is a lot better than doubling a two. Um, and then, but that's just for a short portion at some point during the, uh, mm, yeah. middle of the round, I guess, uh, unpredictable. And then that song plays again at the end. So you get two chances to double your points. And, um, the cool thing, I guess, or like the extra thing to think about is if you get a catch in the sweet spot during mm. Your, your last catch in the sweet spot during the fireball song, you actually quadruple. So you get, instead of four, you get 16 points. Doubled again, yeah. Yeah, doubled again, that's right. And that, that applies also to the first time the music is playing, right? So like, if you, does that apply to the, so if we, if we clear out all eight of the zones, the first time if the music's playing and we hit the sweet spot on the way back, eight, and then the sweet spot to clear all the, zones that should also quadruple it then also too right that doesn't only happen at the end of the game uh i don't, as, I don't be a question I, for jack but i thought it was the last catch of the entire round is it only the last catch of the round oh, or is it during question, the fireball right? i don't think the current rules clarify that so like that's that's a cool thing for us to go back and look at and when i was when i heard the that. description of the game when i planned it it didn't work that way because i got my music really late which we're going to talk about later but when we planned it, I had planned on working up in numbers, having the numbers, you know, the bigger numbers happen at some point when the music has to eventually come on, right? And then hitting the sweet spot on the way back to get the quadruple and then going, gathering all the discs and then restarting the eight from there. So I had planned on hitting that eighth spot and then hitting the sweet spot on the way back for the quadruple in both the sound zones. I'll have to go so, back and look at how the rules are written. Um, that would be cool to be able to do it both times. I think it refers to like your last catch As a sweet spot bonus, but, um, but I'll look, um, by the way, Ben, great job of kind of going, that, giving, yeah. giving a, uh, you know, an, uh, an idea of what the game is all about. And for those of you listening to the podcast in the comment section, um, I will post a virtual players meeting video and also a picture of that field that Ben was talking about. So you can get kind of get a sense of what he was talking about and where you would stand and where the different zones are. Yeah, it's yeah. easier to see drawn out, especially when you're making your plans for um, for your strategy. I yeah, looking at the field is not going to help you strategize for this one at all. This yeah. is like yeah, to look at the score sheet and make a plan or look, you know, plan it out in your head. If you look at the field, it's not going to, that doesn't, that just strategy didn't work for me when I got out there. It it <laughs> yeah. It's not, the numbers aren't painted on the field or anything. So you got to, you got to kind of know where you're going. And when the judge says catch in five, you need to know, know where five is, where the five was. And they're and not, it's like, it could be any order, you know what I mean? Like the order that we have on the score sheets, but if you don't learn the order we have on the score sheets, like some of the numbers aren't the numbers that you think that they would be based on how, you know, doing them across versus like doing them some other way. Does that make sense? Like there were some numbers yeah. that I thought would be somewhere and they were, I think it was the seven and the five I thought would be somewhere else other than they were. Yeah. Yeah. The five ends up being a, a pretty close yeah. throw and and you know like the same distance as as some of the lower point throws almost so yeah yep. you got to know what you're doing a little bit when you step out there it's not it's not quite as straightforward as four-way play where most people paint the numbers on the and it just goes around in a circle yep 
So you mentioned like the fireball bonus time, Ben, and you said at some point this is going to play. Right. So um, I understand that it is. Uh, I know that during the beta test, we had six different timers. And so for each of the different people that came up, we just randomly had the person pick a timer. And so when like if when you got up there, Ben, maybe the fireball bonus time happened 15 seconds into the round. But when Dre got up there, it could have happened 30 seconds it, into the very round. Late. Yeah, really, really um, late. Yeah. As a player, how does that randomness, how does that factor into your strategy or like, can you not strategize for it? Like, tell us about how that impacts your play. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, the only other game kind of like that is, is of course, spaced out with a die roll. Um, but, you know, I mean, you could roll before anyone even starts playing. So then you have plenty of time to think about where you're standing and where you're going to go. So it's, it's certainly not like things change in the middle of the round on you. Um, yeah, it was cool because I... I beta tested it when it was like a fixed time, I think starting around like 35 seconds or something like that. And I definitely had it gamed to the point where I could be pretty sure that disc was going to be in the air when the fireball song started um, and clear like one, two, four and three or something, and then be ready to throw one out, um, which is good of course like to strategize but the the randomness i think will throw a wrench in that kind of like hardcore planner super sweaty player um mentality uh so i still would really start the same way like trying to clear at least during the up dog x like i didn't hear fireball start in the first like five seconds although i guess that could change i still would go like I played it sort of like time warp. So I did the two straight out in front of me, which mm -hmm. I think would have been one and three, and then work my way back down through the sweet spot and, and over to two. Um, I guess with being ready to throw to eight or throw to throw to six or seven um, when the, when the song starts, I think it, it gets harder when the song doesn't play. Cause you're like, uh, like holding out for your big points. Um, but I think you just have to try to bang it out as fast as possible and like let the cards fall where they lay. Because if you're just like, if, if you're not going to clear the zones waiting for the song to start, I mean, you could totally uh, end this up with a low, a low score because you're just like delaying getting catches and eight's better than zero or, you know, it's not as good as 16, but it's it's better than just, holding on to your disc, waiting for that song to play. So, um, yeah. And then adjust on the fly real quick. Yeah. I, I uh, Go ahead, Dre. Sorry. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. There's your question. No, I, I was just going to say, as you're talking about it, I remember, because I was judging at Updog X, as you did too for a bit, Ben. And, um, there were some teams that it did seem like that's what they were doing. Like they had knocked out some of the lower point zones and they were kind of like, when's my, when's my fireball thing coming? And the ones that where fireball didn't come till a little bit later, I think it threw them off at first because they were waiting, but I definitely think, you know, a good player, just like in spaced out, you've got eight discs you know, I've seen a lot of good players with eight discs knock out two spaced outs. You know, right. like don't get any misses, throw it where you're supposed to throw it and knock those out. And they could do that within the first 30 seconds. But if they're waiting around for that fireball to to go, yeah. um yeah, just just talking through it, it's it's interesting. Like I I think maybe you're right. Just go try to knock out as many as you can and see what happens when the fireball starts, wherever you end up. Well, I can tell you what happens. You're out of discs. <laughs> What'd you say? Out of discs. <sighs> oh, that's, that's right. I, because that my strategy. I had the late fireball hit and I just kept going. My plan was the exact same thing as his, drive down the line, cross over to the low zones. By then the fireball should kick in and hit those three zones and then hit the sweet spot on the way back in, assuming that that sweet spot was still a double bonus, whatever. Um, 
And then it just didn't happen. So I just kept throwing to the closer zones and then a little bit further away, a little bit further away before you know it, it said fireball. I had zero discs in my hand. And you said, well, that's not a very nice time to have to pick up your discs. That's not going to help her score. It didn't. Yeah, low score. So um, the idea was was interesting. But, you know, anytime we have a new game, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, OK, what's the secret sauce behind the game? Right. What's what are we trying to teach here? What's the skill we're trying to develop here? And if I ask myself that question inside of a freestyle game, it would be having like segments. You know, like we have a fireball segment that's at this variable time and we want to execute certain zone throws right at that when the fireball kicks in. But like if you have that as in the same segment as this other one, it's too much of a variable like you can't organize it right so if you have like a four disc segment that you do until fireball kicks in and you always have your four discs banked for whenever fireball kicks in you can go pick up your discs and still have other discs around you so that you can go hit your fireball but like i can't think of another strategy that would work with that late of a that late of a fireball tag like there was nothing else i could do other than just i can't what am i gonna do hit the close zones again you know like or go pick up my discs come back and then when the fireball comes in i have all eight again and i can hit the fireball so i just i was thinking like what do you think strategies it's obvious for if the fireball hits early go hit your fireball zones but if you have a late zone like what would you do with your discs it, you it would be so frustrating for people at a big event to like really love this game and practice and train for it and then just randomly get the light late timer and then whoever it's like getting the far away zone and spaced out like you're just at a disadvantage right they're just like cursing pitbull in the middle yeah. of the round so. yeah, fireball yeah. So like what, what strategy you'd have to take into account that that's a possible strategy, just like on seven up, you have to take into account possible layouts of the field, right? You have to train for all the different things. So, you know, how could you set this up in segments to have the discs that you need for the future set that's coming at some variable time that you can't well, control? I think that, I think that you said a strategy that could work. Like don't wait until all eight of your discs are gone before you go pick up this also, yeah. if you can control your dog's drop of the disc to kind of drop them in those closer zones to you, I really only need to take a, you know, a three, four yard step out and maybe grab a couple discs so that, like you said, if you always make sure you've got two or three discs, if you hear that fireball, I can at least or go for those long them. zones that I'm trying to nail the double points on or something. Thank you for discs and freestyle. And it's also, um, it's decision making under pressure. Uh, we're, to finish the thought I had about what skills being developed, because that's something I talk about all the time um, with with new players is is in the moment. Freestyle is just an exercise of making the right choice about something that's going wrong. And you have more chance of making the right choice if you have more experience being in that situation and then thinking about what would have solved it. Right. So like that's what freestyle is. It's a series of things going wrong that we make the best choice <laughs> to try and execute things over a two minute period of time. And th this really exercises that that variable on your toesness that that happens during freestyle that super creative, like I, the the skills that are being developed in this game, I think, are super valuable for freestyle teams. Again, I'm talking about freestyle because that's what I'm always thinking. But um, I thought that was an interesting kind of edge to this game that would develop those skills. It, to me, it like when you're talking about that, it was like playing freestyle at Updiff this year. You had some big gusty wins. Well, like yeah. probably don't do your flips or your, you know, switch your sequences if if you it's need to. And then the wind dies down, and you can try to you can try to get that sequence done. So I guess similarly, like can't really predict when the wind is gonna blow a bunch of tents over it sort of can't predict when the when, when the, the fireball is fireball's gonna play so you, you better be ready to you know bang out that sequence if you if you can yep. while the while the iron is hot yep yeah i think that's i mean really in reality it. is in both those situations too you could go out and have some good luck or you could go out and have some poor luck i mean yep. <laughs> but you, you you never know you gotta be ready so it's yeah, a little like greedy. I mean, you need to like shift on the fly. If you get a bunch of misses right off the bat and you're like low on disc, you know, you got to, it's not always going to be all catches and you got to kind of adjust. So there, there are definitely some games like that, that help with that. But fireball is to the max, I think. How did, um, Ben, did you find it different throwing from the corner rather than like one of the sides? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, 
it's it's really reminiscent of of spaced out um so at least like kind of being like you you've you've thrown from that corner of the field of course the catch zones were a little different and and spaced out but i guess you could think of it as like the first throwing zone in spaced out um I mean, the diagonal is a little weird um, out to eight and and maybe making sure it doesn't hyzer into what would that be six um, and and actually get a clean throw. Um, but not that much different than, you know, some of the farther catch zones in boom, if you're not hustling back and forth down the line. Um I, at first, to be perfectly honest, when we beta tested it here, like I had mentioned to Jack, I'm like, oh, this game's going to be like too hard. People aren't going to be able to make those throws. We got to have some way to like reset it or something so that they can get, you know, they can keep playing. Um, but then after seeing it at Updog X, I, I totally changed my mind. Like most people were able to either clear all the zones or you know, or at least struggle through it and, and, you know, kind of keep playing without just feeling demoralized by 20, 20 seconds left or whatever. And they're just like, uh, I'm, I'm done. So it, it, it actually, I think will be fine. And Jack did the Pythagorean theorem and figured <laughs> out that it's like a 22 yard throw or something <laughs> like that. So, um, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. And if nothing else, it's a good, a good skill to work on a, a throw down the, the diagonal. Um, yeah. So you good mentioned Pythagoras who knew that he was going to come in into this fireball game Yeah, him, yeah. Him and them. Pitbull. without him and Pitbull, this <laughs> game would not exist. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Pitbull. Um, you said something in there that we forgot to mention, and it's one of the really cool elements actually of the game. Um, you said you wouldn't want the disc to fade off or hyzer off from eight to six, um, especially not during the fireball game, uh, right. why, why, during the fireball music. Right. So what yes. would happen if fireball was playing and it faded from eight to six and you had already scored in six? Yes. I did not mention that part of it. Um, at least at the moment, um, if you get, already have had a catch in a particular zone and then during the music, either the first or the second round of music, you get a catch in that zone again, it negates the original catch. Um, so it's a little bit of risk reward on that one, especially um, depending on your confidence in the throws. And, and, and we're maybe- going for the far zones. Right, right. If if you're not if you're not feeling good about it or it's windy or something, you could instead of gathering 16 points, you could potentially, you know, lose yourself 14, well, 30 total by one catch and you miss 14 and you you didn't get the 16 and and so um yeah, there's a little bit of a risk reward during that that time frame, but I think most people just send it and hope for the best. <laughs> can't play it too safe yeah yeah it's a fun challenge like you're you have the fireball you know you want to go for the zones to get the big double but if your fa- if your disc fades in these zones by the way there's no space in between the zones so right. all the zones are packed up right next to each other there's no gaps in between and so if if it fades from that eight zone over to the zig zone which is just a little bit of hyzer and the dog catches it with leading edge of the disc facing that six zone and a paw in that six zone that's going to be a, a double and an eraser of the six zone. So yeah, it's just a super fun twist that like, I think even out there, you don't think about that until you see it start to careen off in one direction. Yeah. Like, like, Oh God, I forgot about that. Nice. That was a really fun element of it. I think. Um, are there any other, like um, since we're still in beta, are there any other like tweaks that you can think of to the rules or the, or the strategy or the format of the game that you'd like to see or that you um, thought of? No, I, I think it's, I think after seeing like a hundred rounds of it or whatever, I was feeling pretty good. Like Jack said, I judged it, which is, is, um, at least some of the games or some of the rounds, um, which is, is probably more enlightening, um, or just your head is in it more than if you're just watching. Um, I, I do think it might be helpful, although maybe too technically difficult to have like the, the countdown timers, if possible, still say like 15 seconds or, or 10 or whatever. Of course, some of that's going to be not possible when fireball is playing. Um, but I realized like, after I got done, I was like, 
I didn't hear the 15 and everyone's like, yeah, it's not saying any of the times you yeah. ding that. But um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I guess in my head, I was hearing it sometimes and not others. Um, so if it's feasible, that might be a kindness to the competitors, like at least like that 15 second mark. Um, or if you're like just embracing the total randomness, then I guess <laughs> leave it out. But um uh, that was kind of one thought that I had. Um, yeah, the initial timer had it. So right. like the first one that I sent you that you guys did a beta test of that where it was fixed, the fireball bonus time was fixed. It okay. did have, uh, I think it went ready, set, go 15 seconds. Then the fireball was in there somewhere. And then it said 45 and then time. Right. So... But then once we randomized the fireball time, it ended up getting on top of the counter sometimes. And then it was like muffled or you didn't hear it anyway. So then it seemed weird to have it for some people would hear it clearly if right. the fireball time wasn't happening when 15 seconds came on. But if it was, that player would not hear it. So I don't know. We'll have to think I'm through it. Files. We we need to edit that into the later files, maybe a 15 second call. If it's a set file, we could just make sure that it's calling the 15 seconds at the part of the file that it needs to call the 15 seconds. Well, you wouldn't hear it if the fireball bonus time is happening, though. That's the thing. You get a lay, an, uh, an overlay of Pitbull going, Whoop! <laughs> he does it, and that'll be your 15 second timer for the <laughs> already, already, the royalties that we're paying the man is, <laughs> is practically bankrupting. Um, <laughs> up dog. So uh, I don't know if we can get him to do. I didn't think it. That was yeah, custom. Yeah, I was surprised, for. honestly, when I heard that Pitbull was the theme song and that you were serious. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah, pay for him to get back in the recording studio at this. Point. We're gonna invite him to Updiff next year to do our live concert. Updog X had a great live concert, so we're gonna we're gonna raise him one by bringing Pitbull to to Updiff twenty fifteen. Can twenty twenty five? Let's see if Cat can get on that now. I think we have time. <laughs> Uh, well, little known, uh, little known fact, um, we have a, a updog uh, player that is currently working on uh, helping us create a timer that would be completely randomized. So it's not like, you know, um, I hit one of six audio tracks. It's I press play and it literally will be completely random. Like it could start seven seconds in for you, Dre, and eight seconds in for Ben, or or 7.5 uh -huh. seconds. Like, it's completely random. And the fire this and the fireball bonus track is actually not Pitbull. It is the song. It's the same song, but it is not Pitbull singing. It's a um, it's a uh, cover. Mm -hmm. So so we don't have to we can stop the royalty payments to Pitbull. <laughs> Um, because we're doing the cover and some of the updog team members sing on the song. Oh, nice. So we'll have to see what that sounds like. I wasn't that invited. Be a distraction. I can't promise the goodness or the not goodness. No, of it. I, I was definitely not. I did not lend my uh, vocal talents. I was prohibited um, from doing that. It's a good thing for all of yeah. us, I think. So anyways, um, Ben, so another question for you, as you know, um, you know, we try to make a theme around a game and then all the graphics and the achievements and things like that kind of follow that theme. And we've already got this name of Fireball. Um, any ideas for us on graphics or achievements or things like that that would be fun? Sure. Yeah, I I um. I was thinking about that a little bit because you at least gave me a little warning on that question because I would not have come up with anything off the top of my head. Um, I mean, obviously Pitbull would be like the logical, but if you're doing a cover, then maybe that doesn't make sense. Um, tight white jeans, tight white jeans, shiny shoes. <laughs> <laughs> come on, yeah, so, I mean, he's what? He's like Mr. Worldwide or yeah. uh, like uh, Mr. 305. So... <laughs> Uh, I guess you could go with those. Um, yeah, he's like, uh, but but perhaps somewhat limited in the scope of ideas if it's all just Pitbull related. But 
Um, like a more basic one could be Mr. 305. And then like the, the more advanced achievement could be Mr. Worldwide as he, as his pup. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I do like that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like his Miami area code or whatever. I totally had to look that up. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then, I mean, the, as, as far as a little like square graphic or like the grid graphic that you guys have for each of the games, I mean, of course, the, the nine grid has already been taken by Spaced Out, but I guess you could put like a logo of a fireball or something out where eight is instead of the last square. Um, and then other things that I thought of, I mean, of course, the whiskey, but, um, you know, I don't know with the family friendly situation about fireball whiskey, um, but like party related stuff like that's what the song's all about is just like blowing it up on, on a Saturday night in the club. Um, so like party animal or like twinkle toes, um, stuff strutter. Um, <laughs> what was the last one? Like stuff strutter? Yeah. Well, all the achievements are like, <laughs> that's a good one. That's solid. All the achievements are like break dancing. Like, maybe. Yeah, break dancing. I mean, they're all like two word things like penny pincher, or like filthy rich or whatever. So, you know, you can't really make it like strutting your stuff. That's a mouthful. Stuff strutter. Um, you did mention the fireball thing that that gave me the idea you could do. We could do like a meteorite to a meteor yeah. to a fireball. Right. Yeah. So I like it. meteorite, like I was looking stuff up about that, too, like um like they'll, it'll make like a sonic boom when, when it like enters the atmosphere. So you could do stuff around that or, or like comet meteorite, like all of those kind of things associated with like a, you know, space theme sort of, um, it is sort of spaced out esque. So it could be sort of the, the redheaded stepchild of spaced out. Fiery stepchild of spaced out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is um, cool. Like I didn't think any of these directions. That's awesome. Yeah. Or like just fire related, like like on fire, like heat wave, hot mess, or something like that. That's that's where all of mine <laughs> went. Got, all I got the hot mine mess went to like <laughs> level levels of hotness. Yeah, and that's right. that's what I was going with. I was I was thinking like, you know, um, my mind went down the hot sauce route and the jalapenos and all that kind of stuff. Right. And scotch bonnet for like when you're blowing oh, it up. Yeah. Scorpion. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, just to kind of get a charge here for our listeners. Um, you just heard some really good ideas. Um, I loved them. I wrote them down, but I, we would love it in the comments. If you guys would also write, um, Tell us what you liked. If you heard some things that you liked, let us know, you know, head down that path. Or if you've got a different idea, let us know. We'd love to see that in the comments here on YouTube or the comments on our Updog Challenge discussion page. Yeah, there's got to be some more people that are creative than I, more creative than I am. So I think the, you had some good ones there, there from, Ben. I like great, it. That's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, can, I was I thinking can... like if you got a certain number of catches during the fireball song, then that could be an achievement. Although I might get a little complicated with scorekeeping if you're having to keep track of all of the bonus time catches but you know five catches during the fireball song could be an achievement or something like that that could be cool yeah i think that um i think one of the most challenging parts of the game is uh the mathematical calculations at the end of the round for the judge <laughs> yeah yeah because right. you've got your score sheet and some of the some of the numbers are normal like Sometimes a six is a six and other times a six is a 12 if they got it during fireball time. And sometimes the score was taken away. So the scoring sheet is fairly uh, like the scoring during the game, I think, is once you do it a few times, it's not that bad. Um, but the math at the end of the game, I'm going to have to come up. I'm going to do some like um, some common core math uh videos for people to help them help them chunk some numbers i don't know <laughs> yeah that would be a good idea to have have it so it 
if possible, when you're entering the data that the computer calculates the score, um, unlike say, uh, I don't know, throw and go, where it's just all human, all human calculations and some games it it adds it up for you. So you can do a little double check. Um, I don't know. That might be complicated though, to have yeah. the scores actually calculated by the computer. Well, this is definitely a game that once we have our scoring tablets uh, going, which is another topic for a podcast very soon, um, because those are pretty much ready to go at this point, not for fireball, but um, I think it'll make it super easy to score this on fireball and then the computer will just have the score calculated at the end of the round automatically. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. I definitely was doing some crazy scratch out and scribbles, um, at least in the first like 10 rounds while I was judging, because it's like, yeah, is it a, is it a catch? Is it a double catch? Is it a negation catch? Is it, you know, and, and, uh, if you make an error, you, you, you need to be quick to to correct that and get on with judging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think we have a few games that are challenging to judge. But then once you judge them a, a few times, it starts to become. Uh, you develop a system that. Yeah, you know, know yeah. What to you get in. You get in the flow of it, and it it's not that bad. For sure. Yeah. By the end, it was it was not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, but after you, I did done 30 of them or something, it was it was pretty straightforward. So the first 30 people at your club, just tell them <laughs> their scores. It could be right. It could be wrong. Not sure. <laughs> next year, fun kids. <laughs> next event, I'll have it down. Yeah. You need an extra proficiency test for when people start hosting uh, Fireball, I guess, for the judges. That's true. I'll get cat on that added into the judges, the judges, uh, training. Yeah. No big deal. Common core. Well, Ben, thanks for talking with us about the new game fireball. Um, you, if, uh, our listeners are excited about it and you'd like to, uh, try it out at your, um, event, we are still in someone in beta testing right now. So if you would like to beta test it, if you reach out to me at jack at updogchallenge.com, um, I could hook you up. And um, by the end of the year, we expect that this will be a game that you'll be able to then offer to your teams for points uh, moving forward. So it's going to be our, our next new game along with Freestyle Unlimited, which um, if you haven't listened to that podcast, listen to that podcast that came out uh, last week. And um, Dre, anything else on Fireball before we jump into the Time Warp round with Ben? Herbie. I think it's time to, to make some Time Warp happen. All right. So, Ben, <laughs> we've got we've got a Time Warp challenge for you. We've got 10 questions. They are fairly uh, easy to answer, like short, short answers. Don't think too much about them. They're just a way for our listeners to learn a little bit more about you. Um, they're fun questions. We're going to try to get through as many, uh, as many out of 10 as possible in our 60 seconds. If you can answer all 10, you will have completed the time warp. Um, are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. All right. All right Dre, we ready <laughs> to go? Yep. All right, ready, set, go. What kind of music do you enjoy? Reggae. Ooh, do you have any tattoos? No. What does an average weekend look like for you? Uh, trying to sleep in and then going and playing with the dogs. All right. If you had to change your name, what would you change it to? Oh, um, Chester. <laughs> 33 seconds left what is your favorite up dog game 3d how do you usually answer the phone 25 seconds this is ben and then my wife makes fun of me what, <laughs> what is your favorite dog disc to throw oh totally uh taffy uh 215 supersonic got it nice and would you ever try stand-up comedy seven seconds left yes Describe your fashion style in one word. Fun. Last question. Lumbosexual. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
And that got that's nine questions. We didn't make it to number ten. No. <clears throat> that, that was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't even know. I gotta like. <laughs> I bet you that's an urban dictionary somewhere. Oh, it's, it's I don't a, know that I it's Google a mix it. between. I, I took it as a mix between lumberjack and like metrosexual, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, totally. Like, I don't actually know how to chop down a tree, but I like flannel. There you I, go. Think, I mean, I who, think doesn't? Think I'm, who doesn't? Who doesn't, Chester? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. I'll have this to change it on this. <laughs> Well, well thank you, Ben. Do I get to know the last question or no? Thank you. Well, I actually, the last question was my favorite question, and but we didn't get to ask it. Oh, okay. My you time can is ask it. You can ask it, Dre. All right, salty or sweet for snacks? Snacks. Salty oh, or sweet? sweet? Totally. I'm the sweet guy. I like candy. What about you? Are a sweet or a salty guy? Me? Yeah. I kind of like both. I especially like it if it's like, you know, a mix of both. Like you get those pretzel mixes with like pretzel and chocolate. On the outside. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's solid you. choice. That's a, that's a, I mean, a, I will eat salty all day. I like I like snacks any which way I can get them, but I'd probably be reaching for the You were the committed candy. to candy. You were committed to sweet. As soon as I said you were like sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't. <laughs> you're definitely. You're definitely. <laughs> Fruit punch flavored Starburst. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm good. Very sour, juicy. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for when you're judging, when you're judging all day. Have some Starburst on the table. Got that, cat? When we do <laughs> judges, get some Starburst for the judges. Lure them with lure them with uh, with a little bit of Starbucks, but make sure it's a it's a tropical fruit flavor, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not looking for cherry. I'm looking no. for some tropical orange. punch. I like the orange ones. You can have the tropical punch. Fair enough. That's a deal. That's Fair a enough. deal. Well, thank you, Ben, for joining us today. You gave us great insight on Fireball, um, and you are our current absolute domination team. So uh, enjoy that. I had an that, unfair that, advantage. <laughs> at the top of our ranks. It was a fantastic <laughs> round. And thank you, Jack, as always, for being my uh, my partner in this podcast. Absolutely, Dre. Thanks for co-hosting with me. And Ben, again, thank you for uh, sharing with us about your, your thoughts about Fireball. And that was a really fun round of Time Warp. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that one and, and laugh again. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. This is like a dream come true. I, I was so, so psyched when you um, asked me to, to join. And um, yeah, so thanks very much. This is amazing. Oh, Good. we're super cool. All right. Yeah. And um, for those of you out there listening, if you guys have a topic you want to see covered on the Updog podcast, just uh, shoot it to us. We're going to um, post on the Updog discussion group page real soon um, and asking you for your ideas of different topics and things that you'd like to hear. So write it down, keep it in your brain, be ready. We're going to need your feedback and your episode ideas. You can always shoot those in the comments as well. And we hope to see all of you guys out on an updog field sometime soon. In the meantime, be kind to each other. And be kind to your dogs. Oh, um, Chester.